Good day, everyone. As we come together to celebrate this second Sunday in Lent, we continue to join our prayers with Pope Francis for peace in our world and for unity in our church. And we remember the souls of Hazel Ellis, Libby Ellis, and little Ava Carlson. And so let us unite our hearts and minds as we sing together, O oh, bless the Lord, my soul.
He spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. During the week, usually in this thick skull of mine and in my heart, I begin to mull over the scriptures for the upcoming Sunday, hoping that the Holy Spirit will give me a word, a phrase, an image, something that I can bounce off of to help us open the scriptures, to help us live the gospel better in our lives. And as you know, and as is recorded for the past four years, there have been good successes and other times some bombs. Well, this weekend's scriptures, especially that first reading, is one that is sometimes very difficult not only to hear, but to believe that God would put Abraham to the test, to his testing of faith, by asking him to sacrifice his only beloved son, Isaac. Now remember that Abraham and Sarah were both older in their ages, way beyond what would normally be considered a time to be able to conceive and give birth to children. They were way beyond that. And it was, in many ways, a miracle that God provided for Abraham and Sarah and gave them this gift of Isaac. And with this gift of Isaac, God had promised Abraham that he would give him descendants as numerous as the stars in the heaven and as many as the sands on the seashore. And so for Abraham, who had already trusted in God by leaving his home, hear a God again is asking of him something great. Now, as hard as it is to imagine God asking any parent to sacrifice their child, there must be a reason that this particular moment in the life of Abraham, this particular moment in his journey with the Lord, is in our scriptures. There's a reason, there must be a reason, that we will hear this reading again at the Easter Vigil. What possibly could be the reason that this scripture, this passage, this so difficult passage to understand and to believe be given to us? Some may argue that this is a way of God saying to the culture, no longer do I ask you to sacrifice your children, as historians and social uh, historians know 
from the time of Abraham, that there were cultures and peoples around him who were practicing child sacrifice. Yes, we could argue this is given to us, God telling us no more. But we are a people of faith. What's the deeper meaning here? And I think the deeper meaning here is that we are called to an absolute trust in God. It's not a matter of just, I believe in God, I believe He's powerful, I believe He does things that are incredible and miraculous. No, God is calling us into a relationship of complete trust. God is always faithful. We know that. Scripture is alive with God's faithfulness over and over again, even when we have strayed from His path, strayed from His love, strayed from His mercy. God is always present and faithful. And so when He asks Abraham for this sacrifice, what He's truly asking of Abraham is, Do you trust me? Do you trust me that I will provide? Do you trust that I will see you through thick and thin of anything that will go on in your life? Do you trust me? And as we heard, Abraham truly trusted because he was ready. Literally, the blade was in the air to sacrifice his only son. So there's a call for a complete trust of God, a trust in his plan, his will for each and every one of us. And if we think that, how can this be? This passage, as the early church writers, the fathers and mothers of our church, what they wrote, they reflected is, this foreshadows what God himself would do. Let's go to Calvary now. And what happened on Calvary? God gave us his son, gave up his son on the cross. So God understands the idea of sacrifice, for he sacrificed, he gave us his only son who died on the cross. Talk about trust. Talk about a love that God has for each and every one of us. In our lives, God is daily calling us to trust in him. We do not always know what lays ahead for each and every one of us. We don't always know what God's plan is for us. And that's the mystery of this journey. We know where we are headed. We know that our place has been prepared for us in heaven. We know that we will receive that crown of everlasting life. So we know the end of the story, but the rest of it still is a mystery that is opening up to us each and every day. And each and every day as we get up, God says to us, trust in me. And this Lenten journey that we are in the midst of, our prayers, that increased moments of quiet time with the Lord, that increased prayer, these moments that we are sacrificing, offering penance, and then in those ways that we have become even more charitable, these pillars of Lent help us to truly release ourselves from our human desires, release us from what the world is offering us and luring us towards, is releasing us so that we can truly trust in God. So yes, that first reading, the sacrifice of Isaac, Abraham being put to the test, is difficult to hear and sometimes to believe. But God, like he did with Abraham, is calling us, not for a sacrifice or a holocaust, but he's asking us of our whole heart, 
our whole mind, our whole being, that we truly place our trust and our hope in the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us open our hearts in prayer to God our Father and with confidence seek His ever generous assistance. During this year of prayer, we pray with Pope Francis for peace in our world and unity in our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we are willing to make the small sacrifices asked of us to love our God and our neighbor as ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the cry of the suffering people in the Holy Land be heard by those whose influence and power can bring an end to the bloodshed, hunger, homelessness, and loss of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Lent be a time of renewal for all Christians and that we draw closer to Christ and to each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in silence for our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased family members and friends. May they experience the radiance of God's light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for the Catholic community of Gloucester and Rockford. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to live the gospel, share God's love, and rebuild His church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and we again ask our Blessed Mother Mary and Saint Joseph to accompany us on this Lenten journey as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make our prayer to Christ.
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you. Ooh.